This meeting of the Aurora City Council for March 26, 2024 is hereby called to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderwoman Here. Garza? Sorry. Here. <laughs> Alderwoman Garza? Here. Alderman Masiakos? Present. Alderman Donnell? Alderman Franco? Here. Alderman Seville? Here. Alderman Tolliver? Here. Alderwoman Smith? Here. Alderman Buck? Alderwoman Bade? Alderman Lash? Present. Alderman Warman? Here. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the appointment of a sergeant so at arms second. for this meeting? It's been moved by Alderwoman Smith, second by Alderman Garza. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries by voice vote. Uh, tonight's Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Jack and Charlie Hilby. Everybody please stand and then uh, we'll remain standing for the invocation. <laughs> And Father Sean Grismer will be leading us this evening in the invocation. Father. So God, we thank you and we praise you for this great city, the city of lights. We ask that you, Jesus, would be our light throughout this week of Passover as we enter into the time of your suffering, your death, and your resurrection. Come upon this uh, city council meeting. Fill us with your joy. Fill us with your peace. The peace that is beyond understanding that we continue to follow you, Jesus, in all things we pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Next item on the agenda is the Mayor's Office of Community Affairs Presentation. It's Clayton. Good evening, City Council, Mayor Pro Tem, to the community. Uh, we haven't been able to say these four words in so long, uh, particularly uh, because you know, the years gotten away from us and we moved to a different uh, floor while council chambers are uh, underway. But tonight we can say them again. The champ is here. We are excited uh, to welcome Patrick Hilby, a senior at Aurora Central Catholic High School, the national champion for the 800 meter indoor. National champions here, Patrick Hilby. We're so proud of you. Let's take a look. Big round of applause again for Patrick Hilby. The senior at Aurora Central, before he even clinched the national championship, last year, last May, uh, he clinched the Illinois High School Student Association, the IHSA state championship uh, in the 800 meter run. So we, uh, he broke the state record. So we have a state, current state championship holder and a national championship holder as well. Another round of applause for <laughs> Patrick Hilby. Earlier this month, he competed in the New Balance Indoor Nationals in Boston, Massachusetts, where he clinched the national championship title in the 800 meter run with a time of uh, 1 minute 48 seconds, 48 and 47, bringing home the gold to Aurora. Let's take a look just at his last uh, 15 seconds here. We can bring the sound up in the sound room. Get the sound going here.
and so tonight, and we hope the sound can work a little louder for the next uh, few videos here. Uh, Patrick, we're so proud of you. And before we bring you down with our Mayor Pro Tem and your alderman, he's fifth ward resident, he's a ward resident as well. Um, we reached out to a couple uh, of friends who, you know, from your, your, your future colleagues, he's committed to the University of Wisconsin um, uh, to run next year. So we reached out to a couple NCAA um, athletes here. Um, and again, we're gonna, here we go. We have uh, John Zaley, who uh, runs for the Oklahoma, Oklahoma Sooners as well. If we can bring, the, you can get the sound working here. We apologize. Well, we want you to hear these messages from your your future NCAA athletes here. another minute or so here. I hope you have a great outdoor season. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, again, but a rewind. We're going to cut this on YouTube. You'll never hear that. You'll never see that, that, that part there. <laughs> We reached out a couple of, of, of your future uh, colleagues in NCAA and, and beyond, Patrick, just to give you some, uh, some, some good vibes and some congratulations there. Zoe, Joy Zaley from the Oklahoma Oklahoma. What's up, Patrick? Uh, I just wanted to congratulate you on an awesome indoor season, man. Uh, running 148 and uh, capping it off with a national title, fifth fastest all time. Uh, the city of Aurora is proud of you, man. Uh, keep up the hard work, and I uh, hope you have a great outdoor season. Round of applause for Joy Zaley. Oklahoma Sooner. Reached out down to Houston, Patrick. Sean Mazwazgansami, 12-time All-American, uh, you know, world Olympic champion there. And you can see uh, just some of his stats last year. We run and, and he clinched the championships in the indoor and the outdoor. Uh, he has a message for you as well. Hey Patrick, it's Sean Mazwazgansami, current member of Ace Town Speed City and South African Olympian. First and foremost, I just wanted to congratulate you on your amazing feat. 148.47 is nothing short of remarkable, young man. That is incredibly fast. And I just want to congratulate you for that because, you know, the sky's the limit for you. You know, there's still so much room to grow. You know, I definitely look forward to seeing uh, the trajectory of your career, you know, and I've seen that you committed to the University of Wisconsin. I actually have a friend who runs at the University of Wisconsin, Abdullah. He, he also runs the 800 and he's running at 144, I'm um, 146. So, you know, he definitely has a whole lot of talent, a whole lot of potential. And I see that in you as well. And, you know, I think he's going to look after you good. He should still have some years of eligibility in Wisconsin. So, uh, you're definitely going to be in good hands over there. Good training partner, uh, good little group over there. And you guys, you know, you can break some records. So, I just wanted to formally congratulate you once again. You're special. You're special. So, just keep working. Uh, keep the consistency. Keep being diligent. And, you know, just know that, you know, once you, once you play your part, and you do everything you need to do right every day on a consistent basis, it'll always yield results. And I'm sure you know that with the performances you put up. So, you know, just enjoy the rest of the season in high school and uh, look forward to seeing you in college. Have a good one. Big round of applause for Sean. Okay. Shout out to you. Reach out to former Stanford uh, champion, the current world champion in the 400 meter, nine time All American Corey Carter. Um, sponsored by Jordan Brand, uh, but then Corey not only has a message for you, she invited someone extremely special uh, onto her video just for you. 
Hi Patrick, Corey Carter here. Um, I just want to congratulate you on amazing high school track career. I hear you're the reigning um, Illinois state champ, the number one track athlete in the country, um, and the city of Aurora is super proud of you, and so am I. And you know, just hearing about how you're killing it in 800, I wanted to surprise you with my favorite 800 meter runner. Introducing indoor world champion, like. I don't know if it's 10, 12, 13 time US Champion 800, my favorite person in the world, Ajay Wilson. Hey Patrick, congratulations on an amazing career so far. I remember my senior year in high school was super special and wanting to just celebrate a great career with friends and teammates. So I hope you enjoy your last season and really go out with a bang. And Ajay, do you have any advice for Patrick? You know, coming in as a top dog his senior year. Um, yeah, lean into what you already know to be true. You're a great athlete. You know what work you need to do to get to where you want. And really lean into that confidence that you've built so far. Patrick, keep up the hard work. We are rooting for you. We know you're going to have an amazing senior year, an amazing track career. So we wish you nothing but the best. Bye. Big round of applause for the world 800 meter champion, Ajay Wilson and Corey Carter. But we're so proud. To have our state champion here with us tonight, our national champion here with us tonight, we're going to ask the Mayor Pro Tem and Board 5 Alderman Carl Franco to join us down in the front as we bring Patrick up for special presentations. Aurora, big round of applause for the national champ, Patrick Hilby. So we'd like to honor Patrick Hilby tonight for our national state champion for the city of Aurora. And we're very proud of you. And it's our pleasure to uh, honor you this evening, you and your family. And uh, so I'd like to present this plaque to you. Thank you. Thank you. And this trophy? Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Did you want to see well, I just want to say, obviously, we're very proud of him. But when you get to this level, you should be proud of the effort I'm sure he's put in over a number of years. That's very special because he wouldn't be here without that. And he should be very proud of his parents because I'm going to guess they were right along with him all the way. When you get to that level, it's a family and a team effort. So thank you, and thank you for your accomplishments. Thank you. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Hold it right there. Thank you. But wait, there's more, Patrick. We're going to ask that the Hillbys join us on down um, here as well. The principal, come on down, Paul, and everyone. <laughs> yeah. I won't be running, though. Yeah. Okay, it's my uh, pleasure to read this proclamation, Patrick Hillby Day, July 23rd. Whereas Patrick Hilby, a senior at Aurora Central Catholic High School, a student athlete who has de demonstrated excellence in academics and athletics. And whereas Patrick is a current a I I S, I'm sorry, IHSA 800 meter state champion, which he won last year with an impressive time of 150.45, breaking the state record. And whereas Patrick competed at the 2024 New Balance Indoor Nationals in Boston, Massachusetts, and clinched the national championship, championship title in the 800 meter run with a time of 148.47, bringing the gold home to Aurora. And whereas Patrick has committed to running for the University of Wisconsin in the fall and has signed a NIL deal with New Balance and now therefore the mayor, Richard C. Irvin, in recognition of his national title and all his outstanding achievements, do hereby proclaim his birthday, July 23rd, as Patrick Hilby Day in the city of Aurora. Round of applause for Patrick. Before we do a group picture, Patrick, any comments? Thank you for thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. So yeah, thank you all for being here. Another round of applause for our national champ. Yeah, come on in the center, Patrick. Come on, step on up there. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. 
And if there's anyone else from the Aurora Central family, come on down. We want you all in there. Coaches are here. Father, come on down. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for the national champion, Patrick Hilby. July 23rd, Patrick Hilby Day in the city of Aurora. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda is the mural appointments. Um, should I ask at this point if people want to stay or get up and... Yeah, you're welcome to stay if you like. We have a lot interesting agenda, but if you have other commitments, uh, we'll take a few minutes to uh, allow you an opportunity to, to leave. So appreciate you coming. Congratulations again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Congratulations to you and your entire family. Yeah, thank you so much. You know it. Okay, we'll resume the city council meeting then. Uh, next on the agenda is the mayoral appointments. Oh, will the clerk please call the, uh, the, the appointment here. 24-0145, a resolution approving the appointment of Robert Pickens to the Aurora Planning and Zoning Commission. Is there a motion? Second. Moved by Alderwoman Smith, second by Alderman Franco. Uh, any qu questions or discussion on this item? There being no further questions, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Tolliver? Yes. Alderwoman Smith? Yes. Alderman Lash? Yes. Alderman Warman? Yes. Nine yes, zero no. Motion is adopted. Resolution is approved. Will the clerk please call the, uh, the item the next one? Resolution? 240146, a resolution approving the reappointment of Sean Lee, Brittany Borowitz Keller, and Ivan Canonis, and the appointment of Carrie Davis and Kelly Wynoskis to the Aurora LGBTQ Advisory Board. So moved. Okay. Motion to approve it. Moved by Alderwoman Smith, second by Alderman Franco. Uh, any questions or discussion on this item regarding this resolution? There being none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderwoman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Tolliver? Yes. Alderwoman Smith? Yes. Alderman Lash? Yes. Alderman Warman? Yes. Nine yes, zero no. Motion resolution is adopted. Will the clerk please uh, call the next resolution? 24-0148, a resolution authorizing the appointment of Aaron Malone and Renu Chandra Kanakama and the reappointment of Ginger Ingram and Curtis Wilson to the Civilian Review Board. So moved. Motion second. To approve, to moved by Alderwoman Smith, second by Alder Alderwoman Garza. Any questions or discussion on this matter? There being none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderwoman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Tolliver? Yes. Alderwoman Smith? Yes. Alderman Lash? Yes. Alderman Warman? Yes. Nine yes, zero no. Motion carries. This resolution is approved. Will the clerk uh, please read the next resolution? 24-0175, a resolution approving the appointment of Christopher Bennett to the Civilian Review Board. So moved. Is there a motion, uh, but moved by Alderman Smith, second by Alderman Franco. Uh, any questions or discussion on this item? There being none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderwoman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Tolliver? Yes. Alderwoman Smith? Yes. Alderman Lash? Yes. Alderman Warman? Yes. Nine yes, zero no. This resolution is approved. Do we have any uh, new members of our committees present this evening? Would you like to stand and be recognized? Appreciate your service.
And I, I think we want to take a picture so all of you can come down and, and we can take a, a, a snapshot. So. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any members of the public wishing to uh, give public comment? We do. Okay, uh, will you please read our rules for public comment? Pursuant to the Open Meetings Act, all persons shall be permitted an opportunity to address public officials under the rules established and recorded by the Council. Under our rules, any person may address the City Council for up to three minutes with a maximum of 30 minutes allotted for all public comment. No person other than the timekeeper or the chair for the purpose of maintaining order may interrupt a person recognized for public comment during his or her comments. Members of the City Council shall not engage with nor respond to a speaker during the time set aside for public comment. Staff is directed to follow up with members of the public with respect to any concerns raised during public comment within the scope of the City's authority following the adjournment of this meeting. Okay, and how many uh, speakers do we have this evening? Um, this evening we have 15 people signed up. 15 people. I uh, just want to let everyone know that uh, you are, will be given three minutes to speak. Uh, we will be taking time. Uh, I have a courtesy to everyone to speak. If you could take maybe less than three minutes, that would be nice. Uh, that way everybody have, have an opportunity to say something and try not to repeat yourself. So uh, with that, um, will you please read the name of the first person? Michael White. Before I begin, can you tell me where the timer is? Right here? Okay, sounds good. And then one more thing before I start. Um, I have 15 copies of something that I'd like to pass out if that's possible. Can I do that? Officer. Yes, okay. Appreciate that. And your three minutes will begin now. Okay. Should be just over 15 minutes. Yeah. All right, so my name is Michael White. I am a constituent in Aurora. I am uh, part of Patty Smith's Ward 8. And I believe that I will be the first in a line of speakers tonight to encourage you all to adopt a ceasefire in Gaza resolution onto your agenda. Um, in doing so, you would join several cities that have this process underway. I believe Batavia is one. And then if, if, uh, if it came to be that you guys would pass this resolution and then support a ceasefire, then you would be joining the cities of Chicago and Bolingbrook as well. So. I'm the first in many, I believe you'll hear impassioned speeches. On the resolution, I'm just going to kind of begin. I just kind of want to welcome, you know, you all to, in, in, you know, my fellow speakers who will address this topic. The resolution is being passed out. I just want to read a few line items uh, to begin. So it starts off, the very first line item is, whereas the U.S. Department of Defense provides $3.8 billion in annual military aid to Israel, of which the citizens of Aurora contribute approximately $2.2 million collectively each year through federal taxes. And whereas the U.S. Senate recently passed a bill that would send an additional $14 billion in military aid to Israel, of which the citizens of Aurora could assume approximately $8.2 million. Whereas the Aurora taxpayers would benefit more directly from having our portion of this money spent locally to repair and enhance our infrastructure, improve roadway safety, expand and improve public high-speed broadband, invest in local economic development initiatives, and invest in things that concern Aurora residents. Whereas the city of Aurora has utilized federal lobbyists to advocate in support of or against federal initiatives that impact city finances, 
And whereas over 32,000 people have been killed by Israeli military action in Gaza since the October 7th attack carried out by Hamas, which resulted in the deaths of 1,200 people. And whereas of January 11th, approximately 40% of all those killed in Gaza over the previous three months were children, including infants. infants. I'm going to skip the next line item. That's where the UN Secretary General uh, considered Gaza, referred to it as a graveyard for children. I just want to skip ahead to whereas the Palestinian people in Gaza have been subjected to sweeping sanctions on access to electricity, drinking water, food, medical care, and humanitarian aid, the first displacement of millions of Gaza residents, and the bombing of hospitals, refugee camps, schools, and other civilian centers. And the last line item I'll read for now, I encourage you all to read the rest, is whereas the International Court of Justice found it plausible that Israel's acts could amount to genocide. So this is just a snippet, a snapshot. The resolution isn't too much longer. I do hope that you all will consider this. As, uh, as I introduced already, there will be several other speakers that speak on this topic. I just wanted to kind of introduce it with that. Hope that you all will give it your consideration and attention. I appreciate being here. This is my first city council meeting and hopefully not the last. Uh, that's all I'll do now. Thank you. Hershid Hold. three minutes to speak beginning now. Um, good evening, Mayor and the City Council. Thank you very much. We have a humanitarian cause that transcends religion, borders, pol politics, and ideologies. The urgent need for a permanent and sustainable ceasefire resolution for Gaza and Israel. Our request is to save all lives on the humanitarian grounds, stop all killings, and reunite all Muslims, Jewish, and Christian hostages with their families. Over 36,000 Palestinians, 1,200 Israelis, 14,000 children, and over 75,000 are injured, and over 70% of Gaza buildings are inhabitable. We don't know how many are dead under the rubbles. Here is a quote. Children are being born and being killed the same day. This was told to me by a Palestinian sister that I know personally. I attended the 2024 Ramadan proclamation, and I like to quote two items from there. The first is, one of the Aurora's greatest strengths is our diversity, and the second is enhancement and expansion of both through the city's equity and inclusion efforts. We believe passing this resolution reflects Aurora's commitment to peace, diversity, and inclusion. Our city leaders do what they say. Some, of my, some, of, some may say it is not our local concern, but I disagree. Instead of asking why pass a resolution, I ask you to ask yourself, why not? Human values like peace and justice are universal. Passing a resolution upholds these values. Just in the last two weeks, we have made over 10,000 calls, sent thousands of emails, and mailed 1,500 letters to federal officials, but no one is listening to us. As one of my Jewish friend, Peter urges, please, you listen to us. Ceasefire benefits both Palestinian and Israel. The U.S. Senator Durbin wrote in a letter to me personally on a February 22 letter, and I quote, the humanitarian toll inflicted on the people of Gaza has been of historic magnitude and increasingly becomes counterproductive to Israel's security. Since October 7, nearly one in 100 people in Gaza has been killed. No cause or grievance justifies this deliberate killing of innocent civilians, and more must be done to bring this conflict to an end." End quote. Under the First Amendment, we have the right to petition our government, which is you, to redress our grievances. We are seeking your help, ask, speak on our behalf, and send a resolution to the federal government. We have more valid reasons to share with you. Please allow us to schedule meetings on an in in-person meetings where we could discuss these reasons with you and why this resolution is crucial and urgent. Lastly, please include a resolution in your April 2nd committee meeting agenda. Let's demonstrate the even, that even in the face of adversity, Aurora and its leaders choose compassion over indifference and peace over violence. Let's take, let's together make a beacon of beacon of hope for all people who long Thank for you peace. Thank minutes. you very much. To the first, read the name of the next person. Fatih Ali. 
Hello, my name is Atif Ali, and I moved to Chicago area back in 1988. I would like to start with quoting a verse from Holy Quran, the final testament, which eloquently describes the human right to live. And I quote, God said, And whoever saves a life, it is as though he had saved the lives of all mankind. From verse 32, chapter 5. If our effort here can save even one innocent life, then we believe that as if we have saved the whole mankind. And when I say we, I, I mean everyone in this hall, and also you, Mr. Mayor, and everyone here, um, including uh, council members. Today I stand before you with a heart heavy with sorrow and a spirit ignited with determination. Far too long, the land of Palestine has been marred by conflict, suffering, and oppression. The Palestinian people endure unimaginable hardships under the weight of occupation, their lives defined b by fear, uncertainty, and the constant threat of violence. Which faith, which religion, which UN resolution, which Geneva Convention allows to kill innocent civilians, men, women, children, with brutal force and violence? How could Israel blockade water, medical supplies, bomb apartment buildings, hospitals and universities? Is there anything that we can do to raise our voices to stop this senseless bloodshed? It is our moral duty to stand in solidarity with Palestinians, to amplify their voices, to demand a permanent ceasefire and an end to the occupation. The recent escalation of violence in Gaza and the indiscriminate um, IDF attacks on civilians have only deepened the wounds of an already battered people. As the world watches in horror, Palestinians continue to pay the ultimate price for their quest for freedom and dignity. Okay, so, so uh, at the end, uh, I would like to just quote uh, from Nelson Mandela, where he said that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of Palestinians. Thank you. Please read the next name of the speaker. Zahra Ali. You're given three minutes to speak beginning now. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Zahra, and I grew up here in Aurora. I attended elementary school in IPSD 204, and 17 years later, I returned to that same school as a fifth grade teacher. That's why I'm here tonight on behalf of all educators who demand an end to the U.S. backed Israeli genocide in Palestine. We implore you to add discussing a ceasefire resolution to your next meeting's agenda and to publicly support that resolution as an act of humanity. In my classroom, I start the day with a morning meeting where students can share anything that's on their mind. Today, a student raised her hand and said, Ms. Zahra, I heard that yesterday there was a pregnant woman in Gaza who had her hijab torn off by Israeli soldiers. And they kicked her and threw her into a hole and started to bury her alive with a bulldozer. Ms. Zahra, do you know if the baby survived? The truly nightmarish images coming out of Gaza have haunted our community for the last six months. A child's body ripped in half and hanging on a fence post. The decomposing bodies of newborns abandoned during an attack on a hospital. A disabled boy slowly starving to death because Israel is blocking aid trucks. And while the murder of 15,000 children alone is self-evident, questions have been raised as to what our local municipality has to do with a genocide that's happening overseas. That is why today my fifth graders practiced their persuasive writing skills and came up with this list of reasons why Aurora specifically must pass a ceasefire resolution. Number one, Aurora is on occupied Potawatomi land. I can elaborate. How can settler colonial violence be irrelevant to Aurora when the city was established by displacing a once populous indigenous village? Number two, Aurora paid $2,231,876 in taxes to fund Israel's genocide. Number three, Wadiya Al Fuyum, the Palestinian six year old who was stabbed to death 26 times in an act of Zionist terror, his murder took place just off of Route 30, mere miles from where we are standing. Number four, the council should use its power to help. The whole world needs to work together to call for a ceasefire. If other cities can do it, so can you. And number five, what do you have to lose? 
Alderman, my students are only 10 and 11 years old, and it took them less than one class period to fearlessly connect the dots between local government and a call to action. Israel has ignored the UN's call for a ceasefire, and we are all complicit in its continued war crimes. We are directly funding this genocide, so we have an obligation to use every breath in our lungs to help end the slaughter. So please, look into your hearts, be courageous, and use your platform to represent us. Please add our proposed resolution to the next meeting's agenda and support the collective effort for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza now. Long live Palestine, and thank you all for your time. Good evening. You have three minutes to speak beginning now. Sorry? You have three minutes to speak beginning now. Okay, good. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, or the council members. Uh, my name is Arif Khan, and I live in Aurora Ward 9 for the past 20 years. And I'm here to campaign for campaign for the city of Aurora to pass a Gaza ceasefire resolution in the next meeting. Uh, I, what I'll do is I'll start by reflecting on the history of Aurora itself, a dark chapter in our history. In 1837, uh, the Potawatomi Indians of Aurora uh, were rounded up and sent to Chicago. And in Chicago, they were assembled along with other Potawatomi Indians from uh, Indiana and Michigan. And they were made to walk from here to Kansas, a uh, path of like over 600 miles. Uh, that's called the Trail of Death, where Many of them perished on the way, the people who were not able to walk, uh, they were left abandoned on the side of the road and ultimately perished. This was all part of uh, the Indian Removal Act of the USA. The story of Palestine is no different than this. Uh, the Gaza Strip that we talk about has a population of 2.1 million people. Out of that, 1.7 million people are refugees from that were driven out from their own homeland in Palestine uh, since 1948. Uh, and you currently do not need an education on what is going on in Gaza. Like the media is full of visuals that you see. Uh, from a statistics perspective, 36,100 killed. Out of those 12,000 children, 9,000 women, 2,500 elderly, 75,000 wounded, and unimaginable, unimaginable destruction of infrastructure, the forced starvation, destruction of hospitals, the list continues. Yet the statistics, pictures, videos of dead and injured do not reflect the pain and suffering, suffering and dehumanization of the Palestinians that they have endured for decades. Things do not have to be this way. If you look at the history of Palestine, the Muslims, Jews, Christians, they used to live peace peacefully for generations prior to this. Uh, I come back to the indigenous people. Uh, last year on the occasion of the indigenous people's day, White House released a proclamation that said, throughout the nation's history, the indigenous people have faced violence and devastation that has tested their limits. Countless lives were lost, precious lands were taken, and their way of life was forever changed. We as a nation, we reflect on the cha this chapter of our own history and we pledge not to repeat it, yet we become complicit in the same crime and turn a blind eye uh, to the plight of the people of Palestine by supporting a genocide in the making <coughs> with our own tax dollars. Desmond Tutu, when fighting the apartheid in South Africa said, if you are neutral thank you, sir. in system, three minutes are up. Appreciate it. If neutral in system, uh, thank the you. Next speaker. Sam O'Day. We have some uh, papers to pass. Thank you. Three minutes begin now, sir. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. My name is Samir O'Day. It's our privilege to speak in front of you, and we value that. It's your choice to listen and hear us and we appreciate that. The first question in your mind, why this matter to you? Why does it matter to the city of Aurora to pass this resolution or even have it on the agenda? The question I ask you, when is the last time you've seen this room and the overflow room filled with people with an issue that we are united on? City of Aurora like to break records. This is a record for us when you see this many people behind you. Those are your constituents asking you to support them, to lend them your voice, to go farther than what we already accomplished. 
there's a shift already in the federal and state level. They're starting to understand that genocide cannot keep going. They ask us to come to the local people, local elected official, and get their support behind us. That will give us more momentum and support. And we ask you to, to lend us that support. Your community is coming and asking for your support. What are you going to be doing? Are you going to disappoint them or are you going to support them? That's your decision. Are you going to add your voice to the hundreds of cities from the state of California to other cities in the United States that they already approved and passed that ceasefire resolution? This is not a symbolic resolution, if you're thinking so. It's not. It's far from that. It's a reflection about the against the genocide. It's a reflection of your acknowledgement of your community and how they feel and the pain and grief they're going through. Um, you may think it's not the scope of this village. I ask you, is humanity within your scope? Is caring about humanity is within your scope? The answer is given there. You're not foreign policy maker. We understand that. You don't make those rules. You don't make those policies. You do have influence, though. Your reach is farther than our reach. You heard it. They're not listening to us in the federal for different reasons I would rather not get into. At the end here, I passed some pictures for you. Those pictures of human beings, kids, and family that they no longer exist. They had dreams. They had ambitions. They have names. They have faces. I urge you to just spend a minute of your time and just read about their life stories and understand they're human beings. They've been gone from the face of the earth. Their whole family is demolished and gone. And that's the result of this genocide. So please, I ask you to adopt the resolution, add it to your agenda, and vote on it and pass it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Nizam Hatib. Could you repeat the name? Nizam Hatib. No. No. How do we know? Why don't we move to the next speaker then? Sure, Ali. Good evening. You have three minutes to speak beginning now. Yes. Peace and greeting to the mayor and aldermen. Uh, my name is Cher Eli, and I was born and raised here in Chicago. I'm not a public speaker, so excuse me <laughs> if I mess up here, but. I am here to talk from my heart as I stand for, for humanity. I am an Aurora resident. Me and my late husband established our own business here in Aurora 34 years ago. We have been living here since 24 years. We built our house ground up in this beautiful city as I raised my five children here. Now two of them own their own houses here in Aurora as well. I attended rallies in Chicago in support of and the call for the permanent ceasefire and I even marched in Washington DC. But still no one is listening to us and this is why I'm here to support the ceasefire effort exclusively on humanitarian grounds. I request, since you all have the power to make our voices heard, to call for a permanent ceasefire. I want killing of all human beings to stop. As you know, over 12,000 children are killed and it's hurting me, my family, and my community. Knowing that innocent children and innocent civilians are being killed in Gaza by our tax dollars. Being a taxpayer, I would like the city of Aurora to take our tax dollars and use it for issues in our own city, in our own state. For example, we can use that tax dollars of ours as funding to be used here in our public schools, here in Aurora for our homeless and to prevent poverty. There is a lot of homeless people here in Aurora. And I am also a member and a supporter and a volunteer with Chai Care. Chai Care is a nonprofit organization that helps feed the homeless people in Chicagoland. Since I've been volunteering with them, since the last three years, it makes me realize how much of our own communities are suffering and living very poorly. I demand that we use our tax dollars instead of funding a genocide and killing children and innocent civilians to be used in our own city for the betterment of our community, for the betterment of our children's future, for the betterment of our health care. As you all know, that a kid from Plainfield lost his life due to him being a Palestinian Muslim. How much of life needs to be lost in order for us to take action and and do what is right and to save humanity. Please do pass a resolution in support of a permanent sustainable ceasefire and uninterrupted humanitarian supply to the citizens of Gaza. Thank you so much and I appreciate your time Thank and you. efforts. <laughs> you. Good evening, you have three minutes to speak beginning now. 
Good evening, council members, mayor. Thank you for your service to our city. And I've been, um, thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak as well today. So I've been a part of living in Aurora and volunteering in Aurora for the last six years now. And my son goes to school here as well. I live in Ward 10. Um, I just wanted to share with you an experience some that I personally experienced in Aurora um, after post October 7th. So I was at a large store in the city when I felt two individuals angrily just staring at me while they mur muttered and kind of pointed at me, look, I'm Muslim. And you could just feel that anger, like I could feel that anger, like they did not mean well. And later on not that night, I shared that experience with my friend who actually told me that there was an incident that took place at that store and someone like another female who wears a hijab got um, verbally assaulted. So, um, so um, I felt after the experience, I felt afraid to leave my house. And this is a city I call home. It's a, you know there's so much diversity. It's valued for its diversity. And I have never in my life felt afraid to leave my house before that incident. So, you know, I, I, I like you can ask my husband, I didn't feel safe leaving home alone because women and children, children research shows were being targeted for Muslim hate crime. And um, I had to take self-defense classes in order to feel motivated and feel safe again. Um, also, I'm part of a local moms group, and they have shared that since October 7th, some of their kids are being bullied in their schools, like our local public schools. And Islamophobia is on rise in our schools. So external factors, they do have a direct impact on our city as Muslim hate crime is on a rise. In the United States, the Council of American Islamic Relations shared it has received over 2,000 complaints on Islamophobia since October 7th. This is a 172% increase since the previous year. That's, that's insane. Um, in Plainfield, as we know, in Plainfield, as the sister mentioned earlier, a landlord murdered a 60-year-old child named Badea. His mother said the landlord was angry at her for the October 7th Hamas attack. Weeks later, we see someone shot three Palestinian American college students in Vermont for speaking Arabic and wearing, wearing a, a kuf kufaya, which is like a, kind of like a scarf. I think some of these guys are wearing it today. And it's, so it symbolizes, like it's related to Palestinian culture. And um, the war on Gaza, Gaza does impact the residents of Aurora. I want to feel safe in our city. Like whether, you know, I keep hearing this, oh, it's external, external. But I know the impact of it is affecting me. It's affecting my kids who goes to school here. So it is impacting us. No, it is not just external because you're seeing racism, Islamophobia is on a rise here. And my goal is to ask you to vote in for favor of a ceasefire once a resolution is on the agenda. And if you can, meet with us in person to discuss thank resolution. Thank you. Your, your three minutes are up. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, please read the next, next speaker. Hamad Hussain. Welcome. You have three minutes beginning now. Hey, good evening. My name is Kamran Hussain. Uh, tonight you've heard why our tax dollars should not be going uh, to pay for the genocide. You've heard the stats on how many innocent civilians have died. You've heard from a teacher how the kids are impacted right here in our communities and how the genocide has resulted in an increase in hate crimes uh, right here at home. Uh, but you still may be saying to yourself, but what will the city of Aurora passing a resolution do uh, for a foreign issue? Uh, well, as uh, you've also heard, uh, 70 U.S. cities have passed a resolution calling for a ceasefire, including San Francisco, Chicago, Bolingbrook, and many others. And Aurora is the second largest city in Illinois, so why not us? By the city of Aurora passing a ceasefire resolution, we can proudly tell the world that we care about humanity. Our neighbors and businesses will know that this city will not remain silent when the innocent women and children are being butchered. This is not a resolution against anyone. It's a resolution for peace, for the bombs to stop falling on innocent people, it's for the trucks to enter the war zone and simply feed people. It's for the injured to get medical supplies so that they don't have to be operated on without anesthesia. Can you imagine that we're talking about this in this day and age? And, and there's so much that's happening, we don't have the time, and I'm sure you're already aware. Uh, let me end with the saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Whoever among you sees an evil let him change it with his hand. And if he's not able to do so, let him change it with his tongue. And if he's not able to do so, 
than with his heart. And that is the weakest of faith. So hopefully we won't have the weakest of faith. At least we can um, say something about it. So my appeal to the respected Aurora City Council members is to put the resolution for a permanent ceasefire on the next meeting agenda and unanimously pass it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Patty Dugan. Patty Jurgen. Patty here. No. Will you please read the name of the next speaker? Sue Harvey. Good evening. You have three minutes to speak beginning now. Thank you. My name is Sue Harvey, and I have a heart for Aurora. I first came to Aurora through my church, Community Christian Church. I volunteered at Brady School and then was hired and taught as their intervention strategist and Read 180 teacher. I also led and developed Community Christian Church's kids team for Brady's Gift Mart, one of several gift marts CCC puts on each December in Aurora. Later, I was Aurora's Public Library's Literacy Coordinator for its Welcome to America program, as well as Aurora World Relief's Early Childhood Coordinator. I am very grateful for the wonderful education my son received at Illinois Math and Science Academy in Aurora. In fact, while he was there, I brought him and many of his classmates to help me with my work with the silent auctions held by the Neighbor Project, back then called Emanuel House. This is a wonderful and active Aurora neighborhood revitalization organization started by my Christian friends, Rick and Desiree Guzman. This same Christian faith that brought me to, talk, to teach in Aurora and to serve in Aurora now calls me to stand before you and request that you put a resolution for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza on your next agenda and to vote to approve it. Here is what my Christian faith tells me from the Bible, Matthew chapter 22. Teacher, Jesus, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. So to show my love for God, I am to follow what God says and to love others and treat them the way I want to be treated. The Bible also fur further clarifies how that treatment should be in Matthew 25. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when we do, did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger or invite you in or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you and the king God will answer and he will say to them truly I say to you to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers and sisters of mine even to the least of them you did it to me as a Christian I understand I am responsible not only for what I do for those in need but also for what I don't do we all know, some for other, more than others, the horrors of what's happening in Gaza. I'm using my power to speak up on behalf of others, and you have the power as a city to say enough and lead and join them and encourage other municipalities so that together we can stop this absolutely horrible, awful, heartbreaking suffering. Thank you. Thank you so much. Maureen Khan. Maureen Khan. Welcome, you have three minutes to speak beginning now. Hello, my name is Mariam Khan. I'm a resident of Aurora in Ward 8. Um, I'm privileged with many opportunities, such as I'm graduating high school this year. I have access to entertainment. I have access to medical aid um, and health care. But there are many across the world who don't have the opportunities such as I do, um, specifically in Palestine. So I'm here to ask that you support a ceasefire resolution. You put that on the agenda and you vote on it next week. Um, uh, specifically, I wanted to outline some of the many possible consequences of not calling for a ceasefire resolution. Um, of course, on an international level, there's going to be more more deaths, the death toll will rise, um, more children are going to grow up, they're going to wake up every single day with the irreversible trauma of losing their parents, losing their siblings. Um, there are going to be spouses waking up. They're going to be grieving the loss of their loved ones in a stolen life. They're going to be doctors waking up every single day with the overbearing guilt of all the lives that they weren't able to save. Um, and again, 
these are consequences on an international level, but I know that there are going to be consequences in our community as well if we don't, if we're not able to pass this resolution. Um, in our community, the youth such as myself, we're going to be growing up asking why our representatives didn't call for a ceasefire, even after Palestinian death toll reached 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, and what if it reached 40,000? We still don't have this resolution passed. We're going to grow up with the expectation that our authority will gravitate towards remaining passive in global crises such as these. We're going to grow up asking what stopped them, what stopped our representatives from calling for a ceasefire resolution after children's limbless and bloody bodies were left hanging on bomb buildings after Israeli airstrikes, and why there wasn't a ceasefire resolution after six-year-old Hind Rajab had to spend her last days trapped in a car alongside the corpses of her family, and when she was found, she was found rotting in that same car. There was no ceasefire resolution after Palestinians were forced to make bread out of low-fat grains, animal feed, and grass. What stopped them? What, what do we have to lose? And so my respected officials and fellow community members, what is stopping us? How can we say that this conflict does not resonate in our local community? Do we not see the effects of this conflict when another Palestinian, a fellow Chicago dweller, six-year-old Wadi al-Fayumi, was stabbed 26 times? Do we not condemn the school shootings that happen across the country? And do we not condemn the Russian invasion of Ukraine. These events were not necessarily local, but our community still stood on the right side of history. And I'm asking again, what is stopping us from being on the right side of history today? We may grieve the lives of Palestinians. We may shed tears, but it amounts to nothing if we don't call for a ceasefire. No one here is claiming that if Aurora passes a ceasefire resolution, it's going to change what's happening overseas. But we, what we do know is that passing a ceasefire resolution unites all of us as a community against some of the worst events since Rwanda's genocide and puts our community on the right side of history and on the side of justice. Instead of letting those of tomorrow bear the consequences of our inaction today, I'm asking you to please take the steps to stand with Palestine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All time has expired. We thank you for the speakers. And we'll move to the next item on the agenda, uh, which is both the consent agenda and the direct counsel's consent agenda. Uh, will you please uh, read that in full? 24-17, a resolution to use NTI National Technologies Downers Grove as the primary fiber vendor and EX2 technology of Omaha as the secondary vendor for 2024 City of Aurora fiber optic projects for $1,358,149 plus a 10% contingency, total not to exceed $1,493,963.90. 24-125, an ordinance establishing the Aging and Community Advisory Board under Chapter 2, Article 6 of the Code of Ordinances. 24-138, a resolution authorizing Crawford, Murphy, and Tilly to provide professional engineering services to update the city's water distribution system hydraulic model in an amount not to exceed $200,000. 24-139, an ordinance amending Chapter 2, Article 2, Division 2-6-5, Section 2-414, entitled Policies and Procedures. 24-143, a resolution authorizing the acceptance of the lowest bid from Proline Fence for the installation of perimeter fencing at the Aurora Transportation Center in the amount of $53,698 and a contingency of $2,684.90. 24-151, a resolution to authorize the Director of Purchasing to execute a contract with Crawford, Murphy, and Tilly in the amount of $210,600 for water main flushing. 24-152, a resolution authorizing the Director of Purchasing to execute a two-year contract with Fairgram and Associates of Freeport, Illinois in the amount of $341,560 for monthly CSO monitoring, DMR reporting, and new flow meters. 24-154, resolution authorizing the acceptance of bid pricing for three years for the installation of playground mulch at various park playground locations not to exceed $58,793.28. 24-155, a resolution authorizing the Director of Purchasing to enter into an agreement with Advantage Paving Solutions of Frankfort, Illinois in the amount of $150,200. $39.25 for Galena LaSalle parking lot improvements. 
24-156, a resolution authorizing the Director of Purchasing to enter into agreements with Graybar Electric and Itasca and Volunteer Supply Industries in Aurora in amounts not to exceed $243,818.80 and $20,370, respectively, for the purchase of lighting materials for various locations throughout the city. 24-159, an ordinance authorizing the execution of an easement agreement between the City of Aurora and Fox Valley Habitat for Humanity for the properties located at 1900 Jericho Road and the southwest corner of Jericho Road and South Agilon Drive. 24-71, an ordinance proposing the establishment of a special service area for stormwater management purposes to be designated as SSA 219 related to real property commonly known as Cyrus 1 Aurora on Deal Road with various pins and calling for a public hearing thereon. 24-89, an ordinance proposing the establishment of a special service area for stormwater management purposes to be designated as SSA 220 related to real property commonly known as 4441 Ogden Avenue and 195 South Route 59, Aurora, Illinois, and calling for a public hearing thereon. 24-89, 183, approval of the minutes of the Tuesday, March 12, 2024 City Council meeting. 24-187, a resolution accepting the dedication of a city easement located at 628 West New York Street. So moved. Second. second. Moved by Alderwoman Smith, second by Alderwoman, Alderwoman Garza. Are there any questions or motions to remove any other items from the direct council to the agenda or the agenda itself? Hearing none, uh, no further questions then. Will the clerk please call the roll on both the consent agendas? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderwoman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Tolliver? Yes. Alderwoman Smith? Yes. Alderman Lash? Yes. Alderman Warman? Yes. Nine yes, zero no. Okay, the, both the consent agendas are approved, uh, which brings us to the unfinished business. Will the clerk please read that item? 24-84, resolution to accept additional monies received from the Corridor Improvements Grant and award those monies to Scientel Solutions in Aurora for an amount not to exceed $251,592.15. So Is there a motion to approve? Motion been made by Alderman Smith, second by Alderman Franco. Question, Mayor Any Pro questions? Alderman Lash? Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I don't know if anybody from staff can address this question, but when the initial $1.2 million uh, contract was signed uh, we used a percent of minority owned businesses and a percent of women owned businesses and I'm curious if this additional two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars will fall under the same requirements Do we have a staff person that will and, and answer this uh, Chris Minnick chief financial officer uh, I do not know the answer to that question alderman i do not know that okay do we know do we know i can write a follow-up question but do we know if um there's additional requirements because the the local initiative support corporation does get most of their money from federal sources so for example do they fall under um prevailing wage requirements as well as well, I, I mean, most federal programs and things of that nature do require f uh, prevailing wage, whether this specific program does or not. I, I'm not aware off the top of my head. Okay, thank you. Uh, I believe another staff person is on their way up to the council chambers. Just please be patient a little bit. Uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Just, All the yeah, I just wanted to bring to... Um, the element of large attention that this was um, a service that was put out for bid and there were several people that bid for it so um, there was a lot of consideration in this um, so I'm not sure if you've read all that information that would would give you that uh, those details is, is Alex in the next room Alex Alexandra Jeff? 
You heard their address, Scientel? Yes, sir. Thank Apologies you. for being for being late. Jeff Go Anderson, uh, Deputy CIO. Thank Over you. Really. Last, do you want to repeat your question? Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so the original 1.2 million. The first question was the original 1.2 million um, agreement with LISC. Uh, we had a percent, I think it was 20% for minority owned businesses and 5% for women owned businesses. I'm curious if the additional 250,000 that we're approving tonight will also live up to those requirements. Yeah, and just to be clear, LISC is the administrator of the state grant, right? So um, all the monies received through that grant have to follow the rules of the grant. Okay, right. now was my second question is because it, it does get federal money, LISC gets federal money. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not familiar about whether LISC gets federal money or not for this state grant, for this for this grant. They, they are the administrator for okay. the state of Illinois, right? And then are there prevailing wage requirements? To the extent it would be a public works, it would be, yes. But not all, not everything that is necessarily captured with the work that Scientel is doing may be subject to prevailing wage, but to the extent that it is, Itemized trade delineated by the Department of Labor will be. Thank you. Here, Pro Tem, hey. would our legal counsel turn on their microphone, please? Oh, did you want to repeat what you said? It's not Sorry. easy to hear over here. Thank you. To the extent that any of this work would constitute a public work, it would be subject to the prevailing wage. However, not every uh, thing that a person is, that an entity is doing may be subject to prevailing wage, but to the extent that the act would apply, yes. Is this considered a public work? Um, certainly. Um, portions of it appear to be without going through the individual contract and looking at every item of work. Not if I, I can't give you that answer, but to the extent that it would fall, any of this work would fall under the itemized trades, yes. Okay, and then Scientel is not uh, a prevailing wage contractor, is my understanding? Well, the, the work we ask them to do, I, I, I won't speak for Scientel, right, but the work we ask them to do generally does not fall in the prevailing wage categories. They're doing uh, technical computer work for us, and in these particular cases, they're they're uh, hooking up uh, surveillance cameras, CCTV cameras to the network. And, and they're installing them too, right? They're actually putting them on the pole. They are actually putting them on the pole. That's Thank correct. Yeah, they're not providing any power or anything that would that would that would be necessary for a prevailing wage in that case. Thank you. Right. Any other questions? Please, there's a motion for a second, right? And uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderwoman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Tolliver? Yes. Alderwoman Smith? Yes. Alderman Lash? No. Alderman Warman? Yes. Eight yes, one no. Okay, this resolution is approved. Thank you. Uh, we need a motion to enter into um, new businesses to suspend the rules. So moved. Is there a motion? Second. Moved by Alderman Smith. Second by Alderman Franco. The court, please call the roll. Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Tolliver? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Lash? Yes. Alderman Warman? Yes. Nine yes, zero no. Okay, will the clerk please read the first item? 24-205, a resolution authorizing the execution of a notice of intent to sign a memorandum of agreement by July 1st, 2024, to participate in the coalition led by Kane County, Illinois for the Climate Pollution Reduction Grant Implementation Application and Program. Is there a motion? So, so moved. Second. Moved by Alderman uh, Franco, second by Alderman Lush. Do we have a staff that wants to present this? Hi, Martha Paschke, Director of Innovation and Strategy. I worked with our grant writer, Julie Frank Frankino, um, in forming a relationship with the King County Coalition. King County is the lead applicant on this grant. The funds are made available through the Inflation Reduction Act um, as part of the um, attempt to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, um, sorry, greenhouse gas emissions, yes. Um, and so the projects involved in the grant application need to demonstrate significant greenhouse gas reduction. And the applications specify that there's a preference for coalition applications, which is why we um, chose to join the King County led coalition. So there's a number of counties, a number of municipalities. We believe that it gives us a strong chance of being awarded the grant. Any questions, staff? Hearing none, will Just a quick comment. Alderman Lesh? 
uh, not a question. First of all, thank you just for working hard with the Kane County mm -hmm. uh, Board to put this together and that um, Kane County has really done a tremendous job putting together a climate plan. It's been two years of hard work and Mavis Bates deserves an incredible amount of um, recognition for all of her hard work. So I support this wholeheartedly and appreciate staff's effort to bring this to the council. Thank you. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderwoman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Tolliver? Yes. Alderwoman Smith? Yes. Alderman Lash? Yes. Alderman Warman? Yes. Nine yes, zero no. Okay, motion resolution is adopted. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda, with a, which is the treasurer's report. Uh, I acknowledge receipt of the treasurer's report for December 2023. Chris, did you have a few words that you wanted to say? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, thank you. Um, enclosed in your packets tonight, uh, first off, Chris Minnick again, Chief Financial Officer, City Treasurer. Uh, enclosed in your packets tonight is the treasurer's report uh, as of December 31st, 2023. Uh, just a precaution as we go through these numbers and and please bear in mind that they are unaudited and they are unadjusted cash basis reports for the year ended uh, December 31st of 2023. We will go through an accrual process and we are going through that process right now. Uh, just to make sure that we book all of the proper 2023 activity back into 2023's financial statements and results and also concurrently that if there are any uh, leftover 2022 amounts that those are backed off uh, out of the current year activity. Um, as the council is aware, we do have an independent audit performed on our financial statements each year. Sickich LLP will be performing it uh, an audit of the financials a little later on this spring, and the process will result in changes to the specific numbers as we move forward. Um, once Sickage, uh, is uh, has performed its audit, uh, they will uh, issue an audit opinion, and then the 2023 results will be finalized and official. But on, it, on that unadjusted cash basis, uh, in terms of the general fund, we are recording uh, a nearly $230 million in revenue for the general fund. Um, we, that compares to $201 million in expenditures relating in nearly a uh, $28.7 million surplus. The revenues uh, to date have outperformed our budgeted expectations. They are at 103% of the budget. Um, and the, the items that we've been reporting on all year continued their strong performance at year end. Intergovernmental revenues, primarily the, the city share of the state income tax, charges for services primarily related uh, to changes uh, in the way we get reimbursed for ambulance services uh, by the states and state and the feds. Uh, also licenses and permits and interest income uh, has been uh, a strong performer for the city as well this year. Uh, our other revenue categories are essentially either in line with annual budgeted amounts or they're on pace to slightly exceed those budgeted amounts. And uh, on the expenditure side, our expenditure side uh, is trending right now at 89% of budget, still slightly below the budgeted amounts, but again, the accruals will impact uh, those, uh, those results as we move forward. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions there might be on the treasurer's report uh, and closed as of uh, December 31st. Thank you, Chris. Any questions of Chris Alderman Lash? Sure. I, I have, of course, a some questions on the TIFs, but TIF, mm -hmm. TIF 1 specifically, we're short 196000 That TIF is closed. How do we fill that gap? Uh, yes, um, that uh, will be made a whole by a transfer from the general fund. That would be typically how we would uh, fill um, uh, TIFs, uh, it, it, any, uh, in, any deficit balances that might might exist. I assume the same answer for TIF 3 that's also been closed or that we've been uh, TIF 3 will be closing actually. It is not actually closed as of yet. Uh, so there may there will be some additional activity flowing through TIF 3. Okay. And then is there any like DAC uh, in, in the 18? Um, did we move I thought we moved some money from TIF 1 into the TIF 18. Is that not true? Uh, we did, I believe, at the end of December, there was some activity that went back and forth between the, between the two accounts, um, and uh, th that happened. There was a transfer between them. I would need to 
take a look and refresh myself as to exactly what happened. But yes, there was activity between those two. Because they do, they are coterminous. You can port money from one to the other. Right. Okay. And, and, and Tiff, I, I I'm sorry, it. not coterminous. Adjacent. I said coterminous. Adjacent is what I meant. Okay. The temp funds are portable. Um, they are. Okay. So, the, the, but and then 14, I guess that can sit there and generate money to fill that fund balance. Yeah. Several. It's not uncommon for TIFs to be advanced funds and then show a negative balance until the increment starts generating and flowing into the accounts uh, from from the development itself. And in fact, that's kind of the nature of a TIF district is that those capital improvements are done up front, and so uh, there it's quite common for, for TIFs early and initially in their lives to have a deficit balance and to have that made up over time. Sure. The first two to three years until an assessment can be made. Correct. Okay. Motion to approve. Any, any further questions? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Second. Uh, oh, this is just for information. This is just oh, for information sorry. only. That's okay. My apologies. Uh, we'll go to the next item, which is the uh, bill summary and large bill list. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Alderwoman Garza, seconded by Alderman Smith. Any questions or discussion on any other item of this summary report or bill list? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderwoman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiaco? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Tolliver? Yes. Alderwoman Smith? Yes. Alderman Lash? Yes. Alderman Warman? Yes. Nine yes, zero no. Okay, motion is approved. There is no need for a closed motion session. Motion to adjourn. Made by, to, for adjournment by Alderman Frankel, second by Alderman Smith. All in favor say aye. 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 aye opposed. Motion carried. We are adjourned at 7.17.